welcome to One on One. Today we feature Major General Robert Cohn, Commander of the Combined Security Transition Command, Afghanistan. Listen in as he talks with our Gail McCabe. How would you describe your mission today? It is about uh, getting the Afghan army into the fight, to get the Afghans to assume greater responsibility for their own security. What about the police? The first line of defense in Afghanistan for counterinsurgency uh, is the police. And that is, uh, that is the Afghan view of this. Uh, and so we are working very hard uh, through a number of programs, a complex uh, reform program. Just as we did the Ministry of Defense, we're now doing the Ministry of Interior. Uh, and again, uh, focusing on uh, not only institutional reforms, but really training what is the most coherent element of the Afghan police, the police district, uh, which is, I think, the fundamental building block of the police. What I know from my experience in Afghanistan <coughs> is that the Afghan police have a very bad perception problem based a lot on the corruption mm -hmm. that prevails. How are you going to deal with that? Because you're looking to do a whole mindset change. Absolutely. And, and you have to go back to sort of understanding the history of Afghanistan to understand how we got to where we are. The only history of effective policing in this country actually goes back to when the Germans were here in the late 60s and early 70s. And you'll see even in the uniforms that the Afghan police wear look a little German and it's part of their heritage. But, you know, subsequent to that with the Soviets and then with the uh, warlords, uh, what really happened at the end of the, of the warlord era is uh, warlords became uh, government officials and they basically took care of their militias by making them police. What we're focusing on today is building a professional police force that's well paid, well trained, and, and loyal to the government of Afghanistan. In your mission accomplishment, what do you see as your strongest tool? I think it is the great young American soldier, sailor, airman, and marine, and civilian contractor and many of the coalition forces uh, that work for me that interface with Afghans on a day-to-day -day basis and communicate what is a values-based institution. What's the reception from the Afghans who are coming and volunteering to be part of the army or the police? A Afghans are wonderful people. Uh, they, they are uh, very, very uh, impressionable uh, and they have been promised many things that have not been delivered. So Afghans is about deeds and not words. Uh, what they like uh, is the uh, egalitarian nature of the American soldier, sailor, airman, and marine who walks out and says, I'll do this with you. Uh, that sets the example, leadership by example, uh, and, and basically shares uh, the hardship with the Afghans. If you were to talk to young Afghans, I think that is, as I say, our greatest asset is that person-to-person -person interaction. I think I'm, I've heard and I've experienced that some of the solutions that need to be applied here in Afghanistan, certainly with the Army, with the police, they vary province by province. Right. Uh, how do you apply that kind of rational rationale into your training? As, if you start off with the fundamental premise that it's all about the Afghan people, the rest is easy. Okay. Uh, if you're going to go into police reform in a specific district, the way you start is by going down and listening uh, to the shuras, listening to the uh, government that's there, and finding out what is the right type of police force for them. I think we all agree, even the Afghans would say, what we want is uh, rule of law, law and order, a very Western style police uh, presence that basically probably doesn't have to carry AK-47s, uh, probably uh, would be the beat cop out among the people. But in the middle of an insurgency, what we have to deal with is training a different set of skills uh, for, for every police force that we look at. We call it fit for purpose uh, in terms of what the police do. So even in Afghanistan today, we just did, for instance, Charadara in, in, in northern Afghanistan. That is a relatively uh, permissive environment. Uh, and we got very far down the, the line in what we would think of as a traditional Western police force. In other places like Bala Baluk, where we were attacked uh, three times trying to bring in the police to relieve the police that are on the ground so we could take them to training. Uh, I, I assure you uh, the skill set uh, for them uh, that they need immediately is somewhat different than a much more permissive environment. Do the Afghans see, view the enemy the same as we do? I, th I think they have a far more sophisticated understanding of this enemy uh, than we do. The Afghans have a very effective national intelligence service. 
Uh, and because th they're Afghans, they understand in a minute if someone's accent is just a little bit off or their appearance is a little bit off, then they understand who they are, why they're there, uh, and whether it is a threat or not a threat. The Afghans are capable uh, of making decisions, leading, uh, and that is uh, the best way to develop the Afghan National Security Forces with the Afghans in the lead. What's your greatest challenge at this moment in time? Our greatest challenge at this point really has to do with a shortage of trainers that we face. Uh, the reality is that uh, uh, where we have had trainers interfacing with Afghans, uh, it has made a huge difference. And that's why we're so excited to have a Marine Corps uh, coming in with, uh, we'll get about a thousand of those 3,200 uh, uh, Marine Corps uh, Marines coming in and uh, we'll put them in at, to work in the police mentor mission. My audience is military, right. and it's also the American public. What would you have them know so that they could better understand what you are looking to do? That the, the mission that we have in Afghanistan um, is, a lot of people think that, oh, it's just a training mission. They're going to train people in, in institutions, and they're going to give them classes and then push them out the door, uh, and the Afghans will do it on their own. That's not what this is about. This is a combat mission where training takes place. For the Afghan, for the most part, they go into combat for the first time with their embedded training teams and they have to learn while in combat. So the stakes are very high in what we do. But the payoff uh, in the long term, I could make an argument that probably the most important mission in Afghanistan today uh, is developing the Afghan capability to do for themselves. Oftentimes the Minister of Defense says to me, you know, I, I'm really embarrassed that your soldiers have to shed blood in my country and I promise you, if Afghanistan is ever uh, in a position, we will repay you. But we thank you for what you're doing here, and we look forward to the day that we can fight for our own country. One final question, then project out for me. When do you think that one final day will be? There's an Afghan pace, and there's an American pace. And the key point is that we move at the Afghan pace. Right now, uh, we are about, in this next uh, uh, cycle to declare the first uh, Afghan battalion uh, that is uh, combat ready. That's ahead of schedule. Uh, and, and again, the Afghans will surprise you. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it takes longer than you think. Sometimes it's, it's faster than you think. Uh, but what I will assure you is there is the Afghan will uh, to defend this country on their own. And as I say, they, they come from good stock. They're willing to fight. And what we've got to be capable of doing is basically uh, giving them the additional uh, enablers uh, that will allow them to be successful on the battlefield here in Afghanistan. You've been listening to a one-on-one -on -one with Major General Robert Cohn, Commander, Combined Security Transition Command, Afghanistan.